Now, upon seeing the title and thumbnail, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if you had the thought, Jesus Christ, let this video not be about no, questionable God. fan art drawn in the seventh no, level of God, hell. Please, and let me just go and no. soothe all your minds. This video is not about freaky fan art. Instead, it's actually to do with Placidus Sax, the Elden Lord in a time before the Erd Tree, and his very secret connection to the twin deathbirds, which are very much enigmatic within Elden Ring. Before we begin, I just wanted to say, while most of the theories in this video are my theories and stuff I've come up with, I was only able to come to these conclusions because a certain comment left my mind ticking, allowing me to come to the conclusions which I have today. And like I said, while most of it is mine, there are bits and pieces that are his, so thank you so much for letting me discuss this today. I'm not going to ask you to subscribe right now as I think that's a bit silly, but if at the end of the video you do enjoy, please consider leaving a like and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Without any more dilly-daddling, please sit back, relax, grab some succulent, juicy, and of course tender prawns if you want, and enjoy as we delve into Placidus Sax, and of course his backstory. Since Elden Ring's release, people have ummed and ah just who the twin death birds are, what out of god they envoy, and what their actual purpose is. And I think today, I have found a conclusion, something that nicely seals this story with a nice fancy pink bow, and I genuinely believe this wholeheartedly and 100%. I believe that Placidusax is the twin death bird, and while that might sound a bit crazy, and I admit it does, there is actually a lot of evidence that suggests this. Starting off with something that is probably at the tip of your tongue, making you wonder just how the hell a dragon and a twin bird can be the same thing. All throughout history, legends always have a sprinkled bit of truth. For example, dragons. Now, there's some interesting studies done where it seems like dragons are a culmination of multiple different animals. The exact dragons out there that stories speak of don't exist. And yet, the animals they represent do. And I believe the same is occurring with the twin death birds. Images of twin birds are located all around Faramazula, like I'm talking obsessively. And these images, while they do mimic a bird, do seem to also share a lot of resemblance to Placidusax. Placidusax having two heads. In my opinion, it'd be very easy to confuse a twin bird with a flying dragon that has wings and has two heads. Not to mention the stories of Placidusax are going to be stretched very thin, considering we have to go through a whole last damn ritual to even get to him in the time period that we exist in. People who saw Placidusax are either long dead or very, very far away like Florisax in the Land of Shadows. There's also the matter that you can actually find the ghost flame in plenty in crumbling Faram Azula. In the time when there was no Erd Tree, death was burned in the ghost flame. Death birds were the keepers of that fire. And guess who the death birds are descended from? None other than the twin birds. There's also the matter that a lot of the death birds actually spawn in on fragments of Faram Azula that have fallen from the sky. I think there's a lot of evidence to suggest that Placidusax is in fact the twin bird. On the topic of how Placidusax even birthed death birds, it actually makes quite a lot of sense. If we look at Bale, he managed to birth the drakes, which are vastly different looking to himself. So is it any wonder that Placidusax, who was of the same age, could do the same thing? His reproduction, though, led to the birth of the death birds. Not to mention, really, the death birds aren't all that different to the dragons. They have two wings and two legs, and a little tail at the back. There's a lot of similarities to them and the drakes, which are both descendants from very ancient dragons. I also wanted to mention, the twin birds suggest that it's talking about twins, two separate entities, and that actually plays into this theory a lot considering game files suggest that each of the heads have their own gender, which suggests they all have their different personalities. So this theory actually is emboldened by that. While on the topic of ancient dragons, the ancient dragons actually have a lot to do with this as well, not just Placidusax. 
In item description, specifically the winged scythe, we learn about white winged maidens and how they are said to be death's gentle envoys. This talk about deaths and envoys is very similar to how the twin bird is described as being the envoy to the outer god of the twin bird. Now the twin bird isn't actually the outer god, it's just an envoy for the outer god. So now that the damning evidence about the twin bird being Placidusax is out, how do the ancient dragons play into this? Well what colour is all of Placidusax's ancient dragons? I'll give you a second why they're all white. They also have multiple wings. Is this too much of a coincidence? I don't bloody think so. I believe the ancient dragons inside of this pagan religion have come to know them as white winged maidens. This also makes so much sense considering the ancient dragons were known to transform into priestesses. Hell, who's to say they didn't also transfer into maidens? and some even kept their wings. Something you might now be wondering as well is how does this fit into the storyline and timeline of the Lands Between and Lands of Shadow? Surprisingly, it's actually quite simple. We are told the dragons existed in an age before the Earth Tree. We also find ancient dragons and dragons and drakes and dragon communion in the Lands of Shadow. So that means they must have existed in full force before the lands between the lands of shadow were split apart from each other. So that places the dragons before the golden order. What you might not know is it actually seems the dragons come before the horn scent. Now throughout the lands of shadow we see remnants of the ghost flame but instead of something that seems like it's in full swing it seems to be a relic of a bygone age. It's just scattered around and it doesn't really have importance it seems on the horn scent culture. And considering the dragons have said to have lived in a prehistoric age before the Erd Tree, I like to think that maybe the dragons, Placidusax and the Twin Birds and the Ghost Flame came far before the Hornsund even reared its head. This would also place Bale and Placidusax's duel so bloody far back in the past, not to mention the height of Pharaoh Missoula. For the twin birds, for them to come about, it has to happen after Bale and Placidusax's duel, because that is when he lost his other heads. Given the timeline placement, it also gives further implications towards the Erd Tree and how old it actually is. You may or may not know, but the Erd Tree is actually a parasite, and that golden glowing guy up the top is not the real Erd Tree. The Greater World basically hijacked the Erd Tree and that is what we see up on the surface, but below in the deep root depths, we see the original Great Tree. And considering the Ghost Flame in item descriptions is compared to Grace, and considering all of that, I think it's only fitting that this age would have its own Great Tree. And I do believe this specific Great Tree of that age is the Great Tree in the deep root depths. The same one that would later become the Erd Tree. And so once we put all this into perspective, is it any wonder that the sacrificial twig which we actually find and is dropped from the worm-faced in crumbling Pharaoh Missoula, it talks about how it was plucked from the Erd Tree a long, long time ago. And considering its placement, I think it's actually talking about the Great Tree long ago back in the time of the Ghost Flame and the Twin Birds. Something that adds on to this further is actually what we find in Malaketh's boss room. Before we get any further though, I do need to just say, something that I've seen so many people say is talking about the fact Malaketh is in Faramazula. It's not as deep as you might think. You might think, oh that room he's in is just his room, but I don't think it is. It seems to me like he's literally squatting in Faramazula beyond space and time with destined death. None of the architecture in there, I believe, is actually his design. Instead, he's just got squatter's rights. At the back of Malaketh's boss room, we see this child surrounded by three wolves. Now, a lot of people have actually been saying that this is Marika. People have been saying that for two years. I actually don't think it is. Instead of it being Marika and her loyal sworn wolves, I actually think it's a metaphor. We see this human child and then we see these three wolves. What do we see all throughout Faramazula? 
we see these hybrids between man and beast. I believe the man is represented by this human child which has this leaf branch going through her hair. Due to that fact I've come to the conclusion that this little child not only represents human-esque creatures inside the lands between but also the great tree. Perhaps these human-esque creatures actually worshipped the great tree. So then when it comes to the wolves I believe that is representing the beasts of the land. So then when they are brought together it symbolizes this unity between these beings that worship the great tree and have these powers and the unintelligent beasts of the land where they are then fused together and we see the results of that all throughout the lands between the lands of shadow and more specifically within crumbling Faramazula. This whole metaphor is looked over by what looks like a primordial Elden Ring. Now if this is the Elden Ring of Placidosax's reign, we could see this whole metaphor, this whole depiction of the primordial Elden Ring being above this metaphor as Placidosax looking over the creation and unity of the two species existing inside his kingdom. Now if the Great Tree was hijacked and the Parasite took over becoming the Earth Tree, who's to say the Elden Ring isn't also the same? What if a long long time ago there was this primordial Elden Ring that we see looking protectively over this metaphor before then the Parasite that is the Greater Will took over the Elden Ring injecting this Parasite and then we get this different Elden Ring that we see inside the lands between, inside of Radigan and all around the Golden Order. Now I'm not sure what this means so I'm going to need your help a little bit on this one but I have seen that there are what looks like the same creatures from the Finger Ruins on the walls depicted inside of Faramazula. Now this is really interesting, there's multiple answers to this. Perhaps Faramazula and this age had some kind of connection to the Greater Will and Matea. Or it's simply a coincidence and these fingeresque creatures simply turned coat. I'm not exactly sure and I'm really curious to see what you all have to say. Sadly everyone, that is the end of the video. I really hope you did enjoy this one, it was such a blast to make and honestly I think this is a really compelling theory and I really hope you did enjoy. If you did end up enjoying the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel and it lets me know you're enjoying the style of content. I'm not going to ramble on any longer, I really hope you have a great rest of your day, don't you dare go hollow friends and may you find your worth in the waking world. Goodbye everyone.